Ladies and gents, welcome to TFI CAD Tips in 4K, 60 FPS, crispy goodness, bringing you the future baby cakes. What we're doing today, we're looking at how to make a vice, or how to, how to model a vice-ish. But mainly, we're looking at how to simulate the movement of a vice, turn a spindle and make the jaws move together. How do we do that? It's not easy. Well, it is easy once you know how to do it. We're going to go through that and we're going to see how to do it. Like I said, we're not going to look at how to actually model a full vice. That, that'll that take too long. We're just going to model the key components, the spindle and two jaws or things that represent jaws. And we're mainly interested in what you've got to do to simulate the movement. How do we do that? There's a number of ways of approaching the, the design itself. In the real world, you could, I think the best option would be to go to top down. You start with an assembly and then you model the three components in place using create component But I haven't tested this either. I am I'm freestyling this. I haven't practiced this at all I'm gonna go for a multi-bodied part because we're only really doing three bodies So I think this is gonna be it might be a good way to introduce some people to multi-body solids that haven't done that yet So we're gonna start by creating a new IPT and then we're going to There's gonna be a lot. Of, I'm gonna have to fill some time here while I'm waiting for inventor to do stuff and I'm clicking stuff and waiting for things to happen It's, it's a bit a fiddly tutorial if it's even a tutorial. I think it is. I think it can be classed as a tutorial. I don't see why not. So we're going to start by creating a new sketch in the new IPT. And let's start by dropping a sketch on this uh, YZ plane. And what you're going to see as well, what you're going to see, anybody interested in this sort of stuff, is you're going to see some of the issues that you get with 4K. Even in Inventor 2017, you're going to start to see some of the weird scaling issues that you get on a 4K screen. I've increased the size of the annotations. And uh, you can see the little uh, the, the text at the bottom left-hand corner of the work plane. They're still absolutely tiny, but you've got these massive glyphs. There's other various issues that we're going to come up against, but I'll point them out as we go. So we're going to start a new sketch on this plane, and then we're going to draw a circle. And this is going to represent the center body of the spindle. Now, I'm not going to be making a detailed set of parts. It's just not important. So let's start by saying the spindle is going to be uh, 50. And there's another. There's a perfect example of 4K not working. I've just typed in 15 and you cannot see it all in the, the parameter dialog box. 4K, the future, baby. Right, 15 mil, that'll do. And then uh, let's. this is absolutely hideously ugly on screen, I know. But I, I, I ain't starting it again. <laughs> I'm not starting it again, so I was like... Right, 15 mil, let's finish that sketch and let's extrude him by... Uh, I don't know, I don't know, let's say 150 mil, and let's go both ways, something like that, that'll do, uh, will it do, no, let's make it 200, let's make it slightly longer, there we go, right, so that's the main body of the, the, main body of the spindle, that's what's going to turn and move the jaws together, but we need a handle, we don't need a handle, but it kind of makes it look more like a vice if you do have one, so let's do another sketch, and let's sketch through, because I, because I snapped our circle to the centre of the part, alright, you can see the, that little dot there, that's the centre of the part, that means that I can create another sketch on one of the uh, the XY plane like that, and that'll go right the way through the center of the spindle. So it's essentially sketching on the center line. It's one of the massive advantages of uh, making things symmetrical. But let's go for the XZ plane instead. That's sort of a better orientation. Uh, press F7 on the keyboard, and that slices the L graphicos, and that gives you just it just moves the material away from view so you can see what you're actually physically sketching on so it's it's like a sort of pseudo cross section and um, we're going to draw uh, the the profile for the handle so let's just say i don't know eight mil maybe slightly too big let's edit him let's make that five that'll do right so that's the that's the body of the of the handle uh, we need to put it in position we need to constrain it into position so i need to move this down to be on the center line of that axis so it needs to be sort of sitting on that axis. And this is, yeah, how do we do that? Well, you can do a constraint. Let's just say a, a horizontal constraint between the center of the circle and then the center of the part. That'll do. And then in terms of its position, so it can now move along the axis. It's constrained onto the axis, but it can move along. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do this. I would probably, in this case, project the edge of that. So that's the, the circle itself, the edge of the, of the handle or the spindle. And then we can create a dimension between the center uh, let's see, this is difficult. I'm struggling to pick up the center because of the size of the annotations. There we go. So dimension between there and there, and then again, this doesn't matter. The, this isn't important. This is just all guesswork. I'm just, I'm, I'm essentially modeling a make-believe spindle, so it, it doesn't really matter what the sizes are. So we're going to finish that sketch. Then we're going to extrude, and we're going to go both ways. And there you go. There's sort of a, a kind of ish representation of a spindle. Now you probably have like a little you know a metal ball on the end of there sort of a grip so that anyone you know in real life if someone was going to turn the handle that have something to grip on you but not interested in that at all at this point 
Uh, we're only interested in movement, like I say. So let's go for, uh, we need to now model the jaws. I'm not going to model the body of the vice. I'm only going to model the spindle and the two jaws that move together. That's all we need for the motion. If you were working on a proper vice, you could still do this technique exactly the same. You would just be working with bigger components. It would be exactly the same, I guess, the same principle. So we're going to go for uh, a new sketch, and then we're going to sketch, oh, I don't know, let's go for this plane here, the YZ plane. That'll do. Right, and then we're going to model the first jaw. Again, this is the jaws are just going to be blocks. That's all I'm really interested in. You could model the teeth. You could model, you know, a back body for the jaw. I'm not really interested in that, though. So let's say so big, and let's put some sizes on. So I think it's going to be 175. That's uh, approximately okay. And then 25, that'll do. So now I need to position the actual body because it's now free to float around in space so just to keep it nice and tidy and i guess it would be it would be perfectly sort of symmetrical the center of the jaw would be in line with the center of the spindle wouldn't it so let's do that let's do a uh, vertical constraint between that there you go there's another 4k issue a little dot representing the center point is absolutely tiny autodesk it's not quite ready for 4k if i'm honest evidently so let's do a constraint between there and then the center of the part there that moves them across and then in terms of its position upwards well, I suppose again, it depends on your design. I mean, is there anybody really going to be actually manufacturing vice, vi vices? What the hell is the plural of vice? Vice A? Visage? Visages? I don't know. Leave a comment. Just in expose how stupid I am because I don't know what the plural of a vice is. Right, there you go. So that's the first jaw. Let's finish that and then let's uh, extrude him by uh, 20, maybe. That'll do. That'll do. Let's go both ways. So he's now just sitting in space, minding his own business. Right, so I now need the second vice, the second vice, the second jaw. Let's do, let's do another sketch. Let's pull him off. So we're going to start the sketch for the second jaw. Ooh, I don't know, about 50 mil off. All right, and then let's just rinse and repeat. Let's uh, tell you what, let's be cocky. Let's be cocky. Let's use the body of the original existing jaw as the body of this jaw. So let's just do a project geometry, and then let's pick up the entire face of the existing jaw and then let's just use that to finish the sketch so I don't have to sketch anything. I'm just reusing a face that I've already done because the jaw's going to be the same size. I don't think on a vice you have different sized jaws. Maybe you do. I don't know. I'm not really an expert on the vice, on the world of vices. So uh, forgive me for that one. Right, let's just go 20 mil. That'll do. There you go. I didn't go both ways. Oh, my OCD is kicking in at this point. It needs to be both ways. All right, there we go. And I can turn that work plane off and done right so that's pretty much the, the the essential components that i need i want to turn this i want to turn the spindle and i want this jaw to sort of move backwards and forwards that's that's really what i'm trying to go for here how do we do this well i can't do it at the moment because everything is in a single part they're just multi bo oh, bollocks do you know what i have i forgot to make them multi bodies sod a bloody dog right so i need to go back and do this i, t I told you i do not practice these i, t I probably should but I guess these are sort of real-world mistakes you might make if you were doing this in real life. So I'm happy with uh, that and that, right? So these two here, these need to be uh, one body, right? And I guess they could be, right? So let's uh, let's leave those as they are. Extrusion 3, that's one of the jaws. So what we're going to do is edit that feature, and then we're going to convert this into a new solid. So you hit that button there, and that makes it into a new solid. So we'll get a solid body times 2 in here. There we go. And then for extrusion 4... We're going to edit that feature, and then we're going to convert him into a new solid. So we've now got three solid bodies. We've got the spindle, so that's all one solid body. Jaw number two, uh, well, jaw number one, and then jaw number two. So we could rename them if you want. We could say, right, well, this is going to be the spindle, and then this is going to be the jaw. I know I could have started the tutorial at this point, but some people like to sort of do it all the way through from the start. You know, anyone that's a beginner might just open a tutorial and see me start at this point and be like, I don't even know, I don't know how to get to this point. I would argue that maybe you're trying to be a bit ambitious trying to simulate this movement if you don't know how to model a block. But, you know, each to their own, each to their own. It's nothing wrong with being ambitious. So let's save that and let's save this as uh, Vice. Does Vice have an S or a C? Shit, I am, I am brain farting all over the place today. I don't know. Let's just say Vice with an S. I'm assuming that's right. I'm exposing how stupid I am and how low my IQ is. But I don't care. At this point in my life, I honestly couldn't give a flying foobar in a, in a high wind. Really couldn't. Right, there we go. So we've got a solid body, and we now need to make it into an assembly. So we're going to go to Manage, 
and we're going to explode because because we can't move these parts in a single part we can't create movement when everything is contained within one part file even if they're multi-bodies we can't create constraints and any kind of simulation like that so we need to convert these into an assembly so what we're going to do is explode this multi-body part into an assembly with three parts so what we do is we've got the manage tab and then we go to make components and then and then you pick up your three solids like that so we've got jaw two spindle and jaw it doesn't really matter what order they're in you can't reorder them here anyway i think you probably depends what order you pick them in honestly it doesn't matter though it really doesn't matter so the target assembly name inventor is going to create a new assembly called vice we're just going to use the standard assembly template happy with that and then it's going to drop it in that folder and then we're going to go next and then as long as you're happy with the bomb structures and stuff like that which again in this case it doesn't matter everything's fine we're just going to straight off straight from the back click ok and then that's going to create us an assembly with three parts Ta -da! there you go All right but we're still not there we're still not there what it does because we haven't defined any movement or any relationships between the three bodies now three parts inventors just grounded them all they're all just now grounded in space so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave spindle grounded but then we're going to uh, in fact i'm going to leave jaw one grounded as well and then jaw two i'm going to unground that because that's the only part that's going to move so this one's now free to move around space like this tell you what those shadows are really hideous i'm going to i'm gonna just again off the beaten track here i'm going to fix the shadows because it's offending my eye holes so we're going to just click the front of the cube and we're going to set that as front and that should fix the shadows sort of sort of it's not perfect but do i care not much more right then we're going to do a constraint so we're now going to constrain this jaw in place so that it can free drag backwards and forwards like this so we're going to do a constraint between uh that, that top face and that top face and then we're going to flush them so they're sort of sitting flush with each other like that that's what flush means and then we're going to apply that all right let's just move them back out if you do drag components around whilst you've got the constraint dialog box open, Inventor sort of temporary, well, temporary, preliminarily, again, if that's a word, picks whichever face you drag on as selection one. So I'm like dragging it around and it's picked that face as selection one. You just pick that box again, it just resets it. It's just a nice way of being able to move parts around without having to exit the, the constraint box and then go back in. You can just reset it like that. Right, so that's constraint one done. And then the second one, I guess we can flush that face and that face together. All right, and that should now be this part moving backwards and forwards. Now, the final thing we're going to do is the, well, this is it, actually. This is the key. This is what we've been leading up to. So we need to somehow make this thing to, oh, I tell you what, no, no, we can't leave this one grounded. No, because this one has to turn. So we're going to unground the spindle. We're going to unground the spindle, and then we're going to constrain the center of the spindle with, uh, it'll be the x-axis, so it'll be that one there. All right, and then we're going to constrain the center of the spindle. So let's find the center line that there. We're going to constrain that with the center of the assembly. Sort of there. Let's flip them around like that. Right, and then apply. Right, so that should now be the spindle turning. There you go. But obviously, as I'm turning this, the, well, the handle's going through the, the jaw. Details, man, details. Doesn't really matter. Right, so we'll leave them there. So we've got the handle turning, and then the jaws need to move. How do we do this? Right, like I said, before this is what we're leading up to so we're going to do a constraint and what you want to go for is the uh, motion constraint you want to select this option here which is uh, i don't know what the tooltip is rotation translation sensation and then you want to select for selection one you want to select the center line of the spindle and then for selection two you want to pick this face here on the front of the second jaw and then this value here is how far this jaw will move based on one turn of the spindle and that is entirely up to you that is entirely up to you let's just say 25 mil and then we're going to click apply uh, these two options here this this is like counter or you know clockwise or counterclockwise motion uh, forward or reverse i guess it's the same thing really and then we're going to go apply and then we're going to go cancel and then what we should have now is when we hold the left mouse button down on the spindle you should see the jaw move so one turn of the spindle is moving that jaw by 25 millimeters and you can increase that if you want you can decrease it if you want if if you want in real life motion if you want in, like teeth and grooves and, and gears and cogs and whatnot then it would be a completely different technique it would be a hell of a lot complicated than one i've just shown you here but for this that should do that should be it that's all you really do now you will notice as well that the two components just sort of collapse into each other because we've got no 
we've got no contact sets set up. If you want that, if you want that, it will be a lot more demanding on your PC and it'll make things a little bit more jerky. But you want to select that part and that part. So hold down Control, select both of these parts, and then you want to go to Inspect. You want to activate the contact solver and then right click on these and then you want to click the option for a contact set and then that should now go clunk and then they stop when they hit each other. So that's sort of simulating almost real life movement of a vice and that's how you do it. All right guys, that's it. That is the tutorial. I have no idea how long that went on for. I know I got off track a little bit during the middle, but but that just that just goes to prove. It just goes to prove that I do not script these and I make it up as I go along. I'm thinking I maybe should script them. <laughs> it's, it can be a bit embarrassing at times, but I digress. That'll do. All right, guys, cheers. If you like the video, drop a like on it, that kind of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't done already, and uh, follow me on Twitter. I've got a Twitter account now. I have. Follow us on Twitter. Links are in the description down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles. Go, 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 what you bang, go, what you bang.